All right, Eileen, thank you so much for taking time for this call. I uh, understand you're a new grandmother. Yes. How's that been? I love it. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> so much fun. Absolutely. The pictures were adorable. Glad uh, your baby, your grandbaby's doing well. Glad Ashley's doing well. Um, and once again, thanks for taking time for this. So, Eileen, for people who maybe don't know your story, um, tell us a little about yourself and, and what your experience has been with New Skin. Okay. Well, great to be with you, Don. Thanks for inviting me. It's a beautiful day here in San Diego, California in the summertime. I love it. Anyway, um, I got introduced to New Skin in 1990, so that was 26 years ago. Can't believe it. Uh, but before that, I was working with technology companies here in San Diego. I was in human resource management. I loved business, and I always loved helping people. So it was a it was a great opportunity to uh, work within a company. But then I started to also have my kids, and so by the time I had the third one in 1990, I was kind of in. A, <laughs> I call it my first midlife crisis, right? It's uh, I was trying to figure out what in the world I could do where I could still make a lot of money. I've always been, had a lot of ambition and drive uh, in my life. I've always wanted to do something great. I never really knew what that was going to be. I was always attracted to business, um, but yet I had these three little babies and I was so in love with them. And I wanted to have it all. And I didn't know as a woman how that could be possible. And, of course, back in 1990, it was a lot different than it is now. We didn't have the technology that we have today. However, um, I got introduced. Uh, I got invited by my friend Grace to come and look at a presentation. And I went, and I was very open-minded. And thank goodness I was, because when I came to hear about New Skin, what I heard was a phenomenal company that had a great idea, had fabulous products that I believed would have a huge uh, appeal to the market. And so, anyway, I jumped in, 1990, jumped in, um, didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> And had a little success and then had failure and had a little success and had failure and kind of struggled for a long time, maybe 12 years. And uh, I was a lapis. I got to, to open up a few markets, got to go to Japan, and, but never had the huge success that I really, really desired. And so in 2003, I was at a conference where they were launching a new technology called the Biophotonic Scanner. And I was there uh, in that room and looking around me and looking at all the successful people around me and thinking, you know, what is wrong with me? I can't believe this is happening. And, um, and I had really a defining moment. And it was, a, it, was, it was so huge for me because I realized my daughter had just gone away to college. So it was like a new chapter in my life. And I realized, you know, that life was so short, that things were happening so fast, that even though it had been 12 years, which is a really long time, to be stuck, oh. <laughs> um, I realized at that moment in time that this business had really been given to me as a, as a gift mm -hmm. and that there was no reason that I couldn't succeed, that the proof, you know, the proof was on the stage. The proof was the people before me that had done it. The proof is that, you know, this industry is a proven industry. Uh, and if other people can do it, I knew that I could. I mean, I knew fundamentally that was, that was there. So on that day, I decided that it was me. I was going to have to change. And it was actually a huge um, decision that I thought would be burdensome, but it actually set me free. And I left that conference, and I was on fire. I just went into massive action, and I became a magnet. And from there, it took me three years to get to Team Elite. And I've never looked back. And I have a great understanding for being stuck, because I was stuck for so long. But I also have a great understanding for setting yourself free. And so I know what it takes to succeed in this business. And it's not as hard as you think. <laughs> Eileen, I love that. I feel like your story is so relatable. I mean, a lot of times we think that success is just a straight line and you just go from point A to point B and you're successful. But there's a lot of stuff that happens in between, ups and downs. And, and I just love your example of pushing through and, 
now one of our most successful leaders. And so you're, you're definitely an inspiration to a lot of people. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, as you know, we opened up questions to different people in the group. And Mai asked, uh, Mai asked a great question. Uh, Mai was wondering, um, you know, as you're going through those years where you're kind of struggling, you're kind of uh, staying in between exec and lapis, um, what kept you going? What kept you motivated to keep pushing, to not quit? It's such a great question, Don. I uh, remember specifically when I first saw New Skin, I first saw this opportunity. I knew, I knew, it's like a voice inside of me. I knew I had to do this. I, I knew that it was um, incredible. I knew that this company was going to make history. I, I don't know how I knew it. I just, I just knew it. And I started to dream and have a big dream and really uh, start to see what my life could be like uh, if I became, you know, a top leader in this. And I really, I remember one of the times I visualized, I think we all have times when we visualize. I visualize when I'm working out. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be working out in the gym and I'll see myself, I'll see myself, I don't know, on the beach or wherever I want to be in my life. And I do, I do that every day. I visualize my life. And it's so important. You have to. It's the only thing that'll keep you going because you're going to have the hard times. You're absolutely going to have struggles. There's not one person in this business that's reached the top that hasn't had huge struggles. Now, sometimes we look at them, we don't realize it, and we think that they were just born that way, and they are superhumans and all of that, but it's not true. <laughs> None of that's true. You have to go through the fire to get to the other side. But your vision for your life and your dream and your passion of what, why you're here on, on this earth that's what's going to keep you going. So you have to get in touch with that and you have to stay connected. And every day you have to visualize seeing yourself doing the things and having the things that you know that you desire in your heart. That's, that's great advice. Um, you're, you're such a natural presenter. I've seen you on stage at convention in front of thousands of people. I've seen you at distributor opportunity meetings. Uh, you seem like a natural in front of people. <laughs> Were you ever scared to, to be in front of people to be in front of the room and leading the discussion? Don, oh my gosh, deathly scared. Like, <laughs> <laughs> deathly scared. I was so scared. I remember when uh, Nathan would come into town early on in, in <laughs> starting this business, and I was having a little success, and I'd be sitting in the back row because I'd like to kind of hide out back there, and I'd slink down because I didn't want him to call on me to do a testimonial. That's how scared. <laughs> I was so scared. But when I made the decision, I knew I had to change, and I knew that part of that, I was always told, look, the money's in the front of the room. You have to, you have to be a leader. You have to speak up. You have to be in front of the room. I never wanted to be in front of the room. <laughs> I'm happy applauding everyone else's success. But, um, but uh, he, you know, he really encouraged me, he and Jeff. Nathan and Jeff were instrumental in helping me. Uh, believe in myself. But anyway, um, I had to overcome that. Here's the thing about overcoming your fear. I think some of your greatest gifts are being uh, guarded by your ego, which is really a big like monster guarding the cave. And um, the key is to break through that. And I, I made a decision that I was going to do it, even though I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I hated it. Uh, and then the more I forced myself to do it, the more I discovered the gift in it. The gift in speaking is not to get the attention, which for some reason I thought people liked the attention. I mean, I never wanted the attention. The gift in speaking is being able to impact someone's life with a story or an inspiration or just one little pearl of wisdom or something that can trigger something inside of them. And I realized finally that the gift in being given that opportunity to share, like right now, if I can touch one person, if I can help one person start to believe in themselves and see themselves going to the next level, then I'm on purpose. My life is on, on the path that I'm supposed to be on and I'm, I'm fulfilling my destiny. And so it took me going through the fire, going through the fear to realize that. You could have told that to me uh, and, and I would have heard you, 
but I wouldn't have believed it until I lived it. And that's the key about going through your fear. You have to do it. You must do it. The more afraid you are, the more you have to do it. <laughs> that's great. Just take on that monster. That's your ego. That's your fear. <laughs> that's, right. that's great. It's the monster is it imaginary. <laughs> it's an imaginary monster. I love that. Um, so we got a question from Julieta. Uh, she asked, you know, you talked about being afraid of, of speaking in front of people. Um, were you ever afraid of success? Were you ever afraid of being successful so you're always in front of people? Or did that ever come into your mind? I think, you know, I think I was, Don. I think that, um, I, is it, I know Nelson Mandela has that great uh, quote he said, but I think it was actually from Marianne Williamson where she says that our greatest fear isn't really our weaknesses. Our, our greatest fear is our greatness. You know, our greatest fear is tapping into that power of, of the light. It's the light that we're most afraid of, even more than the darkness. And I can relate to that because I think we make up in our mind that you know, success is going to somehow be like burdensome. It's going to be all this responsibility. We're going to have all these people like demanding stuff from us. And, you know, as a mother, uh, we certainly have responsibility with our kids. And in this business, I think I was a little bit afraid of success thinking, oh my gosh, I have these kids. They're everything to me. If I have success in the business, is it going to take me away from my kids? And it really, it's, it's just in your mind because the key, I know there is a question about motherhood, uh, but the key with being a good parent, it's not just motherhood, being a good parent and being a good leader in this is you just have to be super disciplined and you have to set your boundaries hmm. and you have to be present. So when you're with your family, you're with your family. And with when you're with the business, you're fully in it. You're with the business. And that way you can do it all. You can have it all. Um, and it is possible because I've seen it over and over, not only in my life, but in many, many, many other lives. And it's duplicating at a faster and faster rate now because of the tools we have today, the technology we have today, that we can compartmentalize, so to speak, our lives and be good at motherhood, parenthood, and at the business. But the fear of success is a real one for people. And the key is that you have to get through that. And, you know, we're here on this earth to accomplish something and we don't know how much time we have so we have to get on with it and we have to embrace our fear and if fear of success is one of them I think it's a common one for people you absolutely need to move through that fear and have success and prove it prove it that you can be successful because you can oh, that's, that's great I love that point about you know having it all between work and family I think uh, you and Ted, they're, you're a perfect example of that. Just an incredible family, incredible life through New Skin, and, and now even Ashley, your kid's involved in this as well. It's, uh, it's been fun to see. So speaking up to that point about um, you know, being a mom and doing this business as well, uh, Maria asked a great question. Um, you touched on some things that you've done to be successful in, in being disciplined with your time and focusing on the task at hand and focusing with, on your family when you're home with family. But Maria asked, you know, how do you empower someone new to do that? Uh, someone that's a mom that is balancing a lot of things. How do you help them see the vision of new skin and, and add this into what's sure to be a busy life already? Yes, great question. I have a passion for moms. I have a passion for women. I believe that this is the perfect business for women and for moms. Here's the thing. First thing, don't compare yourself with these other people. <laughs> don't compare yourself with uh, other people in their lives, and maybe they look like they have no obstacles and no, which none, none of that's true, of course. But don't compare yourself. Uh, make sure that you set your priorities. For me, my family is numero uno. It's number one. I. I, that won't change. I mean, for me, it's God, family, and then the business. 
Um, the business blends into my family and my spirituality as well. But, um, you know, as far as being a mother and doing this business, it's so perfect. And here's what I want to share with you. It's so perfect because not only can you do it and you can, uh, by, by being disciplined with your time, by being a little structured with what you're doing and when, um, but be patient. Be patient with your progress. And here's the kicker. You are showing your kids how to overcome obstacles. You are showing your kids how to go for their dreams and their goals. And that's the key because our kids are watching our every move. And so really as a mother, if you, th if you have in your heart that you want to do this, that this is something you're called to do, you must do it because your kids are watching your every move. And you're teaching them not only the lessons of life as a mother, but you're teaching them really the true, the true reason that life, you know, what it's all about. And that is that we are called to do something great. And we're, we're called to move through our fears and overcome our challenges and have a positive attitude and bring light to the world and do all these things and empower other people's lives. We have this huge gift with this business to help other people and what better example could we have as a as a parent as a mother to show our kids that that's what life is all about life is not about us and our needs all the time and you know making ourselves happy all the time life is about empowering other people and and that will lead to our own happiness because that's that's what life is all about but what a great example we can be as a parent to show our kids in real life in real time what that's all about. That's, a, that's an incredible answer. Thank you, Eileen. And I think uh, you have exhibited that perfectly in your experience with New Skin. We have time for one last question. Um, this is from Denise. So Denise asks, you know, what are some fears that you have faced personally? We've talked, touched on some of these already. But what are some fears that you face personally and what helped you overcome those? What, what caused you to push through and, and take that action? You know, one of my biggest fears, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, <laughs> is um, I, have this, I have this fear of, you know, wanting to be liked, okay? And I think a lot of people have that kind of running them. I, you know, I want to be liked. Maybe it was, <laughs> maybe it was a traumatic experience in, in, in grammar school or junior high where you're kind of like, we've all had it, right? We've all been, <laughs> like, rejected. <laughs> But this this business really brings that up. Like, wow, um, you know, because we're putting ourselves out there, and we're putting us ourselves up for being rejected or being told, you know, no or whatever. But you know, the key is, I, well, one one of the books I read that really made a difference, and maybe this can help people. Uh, there's a book called The Slight Edge, and in that book, um, he talked about how we all go through our lives, you know, worried about what people think and, and so worried about what other people, you know, their opinions. And then we go through our life and then we die. And then at our funeral, maybe a couple hundred people show up. And then if it's raining, statistics are that only half those people will go to the <laughs> grave site. <laughs> so, we, you know, we spend our whole life worrying about what other people think of us. And then no one gives a blank, you know, at the end of our life. Huh. But you look at people like Mother Teresa, who was just canonized as a saint, uh, Martin Luther King. You look at these great people that really didn't care. Well, maybe they did deep down, but they, they, they acted as if they didn't really care. They didn't live their life worrying about what other people thought of them. Hmm. They did what was in their heart that they knew that they needed to do. And as a result, when they died, you can't get even close to the, the, the funeral procession that's being taken for their life, you know, presented to, to honor their life. And when I read that, I thought, whoa, uh, what am I doing? Why am I worrying about what, you know, people think of me? Um, and, and I decided to stop wasting energy on that and to follow my inner voice my inner spirit 
that knows exactly what I should be doing at all times and to really listen to that more. And the more that I do, and I don't always, right? But the more that I do, my life is just in sync and it's, it's fabulous and I'm happy and, and, and the people that, that laughed at me or questioned me, you know, um, they're not laughing anymore. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like after a period of time, those people, they don't, they don't laugh at you anymore. So anyway, um, you just have to go through whatever fear you're confronting. You just have to go through it and just do it anyway. And you'll feel so good about yourself and you'll grow as a person and you'll become bigger and stronger and collectively as we all do that. Imagine what the world's going to be like. Wow, Eileen, this has been so helpful, and you're definitely living that life of impact that you you mentioned with that answer. Um, it's funny as we posted this interview and uh, asked for questions, ninety percent of the comments were, "I love Eileen. Eileen's such an amazing person." Thank you so much for taking time, and I uh, really appreciate you sharing with that. So thank you, Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, Don. Thanks. Thanks for doing all you do. You're awesome. I love working with you. <laughs> Thanks, Don.